Most researchers have never seen anything like this before. A pressing, urgent need for the dissemination of research results in a rapid fashion. Even though scientists have been communicating primarily through journal articles for many, many decades, the peer review process as we know it today is actually relatively new. The famous Watson and Crick paper that reported the discovery of the structure of DNA was not externally peer reviewed when it was published. Albert Einstein retracted one of his papers from a journal when they attempted to send it out for external peer review, which he viewed as an insult. Preprints are usually early drafts of scientific papers that are shared online so that information can be disseminated between researchers prior to the completion of the journal peer review process. During the COVID-19 pandemic, researchers are posting preprints related to coronavirus at a much higher rate, suggesting that the research community is becoming more familiar in the biomedical sciences with the concept and benefits of sharing their work early. Many funders and institutions have recognized the value of preprints, particularly when there's a public health emergency, such as an outbreak like SARS, Zika, or Ebola. In the SARS outbreak, the majority of papers were published in traditional journals only after the outbreak had ended. And as a result, they did not have the same impact they could have on public health. The process of journal publishing is slow relative to the immediacy of an outbreak. So this is the first time, uh, this COVID-19 outbreak is really the first time that we're seeing the widespread use of preprints during the public health emergency. Sharing research results benefits not only the individual researcher, but the scientific community and the general public at large. By putting results out there where others can build off of them and with appropriate credit uh, and start investigating new areas of research is something that makes discovery in science happen faster. For example, studies that look at the persistence or transmission of droplets that occur in breath um, can be helpful for designing personal protective equipment or understanding how healthcare workers and others can protect themselves. Many researchers use social media and in particular Twitter to share and discuss research findings, especially preprints and other information that's distributed in a less formal way. On Twitter, conversations on preprints can happen very rapidly and involve a flexible group of researchers who all bring different perspectives to their conversation. There is a kind of community, crowdsourced community attention on a paper. And that's important because by communicating publicly, researchers broaden the audience that they're, they're speaking with. They're not just um, putting something out to a private Slack channel or discussing with their own labs or speaking to the people who can afford to be in the room at a conference. They're sharing something openly with the whole world. And there's also third-party sites for reprints that provide commentary and organized review or rapid review The concerns around preprints in a pandemic are amplified by the intense media attention. In this environment, any new findings are newsworthy, and so there's the potential for incorrect information or information that turns out to be not robust to be amplified and disseminated to the public. Journalists or perhaps the readers uh, might not be aware of the provisional nature of preprints. It's very important 
that we have peer review to evaluate research that might be methodologically flawed or to identify problematic science um, as much as possible. The benefit of peer review is that it is a very thorough process. So there is always a danger that by trying to speed it up, um, there might be some compromises to the quality. For example, a paper claiming uncanny sequence similarity between coronavirus and HIV was posted on the preprint server BioArchive. It garnered over a hundred comments uh, over the course of a few days before being withdrawn by the authors voluntarily within 48 hours. So while this is an example of potentially damaging use of a preprint server to spread potentially harmful information, it's also an example of the power of community commentary to help corrupt the scientific record. Some journals are changing their policies and practices in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Because uh, there's a demand for peer-reviewed information faster, some journals are accelerating their peer review process so that they can publish papers uh, much faster than they could normally. Other journals that are traditionally publishing their work behind paywalls have removed those restrictions to enable anyone to read the research results. It's especially important to be familiar with what a preprint is, how it's different from a journal article, and to look for the opinion of experts who are really familiar with the techniques and the field of research in terms of interpreting what it means for scientific discovery. Researchers, when talking to journalists, need to be clear about what a preprint is. Journalists, uh, I think, also must convey in their article information about what a preprint is. Science progresses only as quickly as it can be shared between researchers, enabling those researchers to communicate with one another in more efficient ways can increase the process of discovery. Opening up the peer review process to incorporate comments from readers that are outside of the traditional reviewer pool can also diversify the input into that peer review process. So perhaps enabling uh, community comment and encouraging community comment on preprint servers can complement journal organized peer review and make it even more robust. My hope is that a silver lining of this pandemic is that researchers will see new opportunities to change the way that they communicate, to make it faster, more open, and more efficient.